Right, well, here I am again. I have got an extended test drive. Seven days of a Zoe, 41 kilowatt hour. All charged up. Boom, ready. Okay, so we've got 145 miles displayed that it can do. Two rear belts fastened, excellent. Right, let's turn this off. Job done. Right, onwards and upwards. We've got a whole week of this, so that's brilliant news. Uh, I'm gonna try and cram in some long driving and just normal driving to and from work and see how we get on. Oh yeah, double muffin meal, please. Thank you. Don't you love sitting behind these big diesel throwing out things? Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, I've got this car on 3,036 miles. So we'll just see what I do over the course of the next seven days. Um, and then report back. Ah, oh, so nice to be in it again. Not long now. Especially after driving the diesel for a few days. Ah. Uh, from one electric vehicle to another. Need to go into the, uh, into the bank. Okay, okay, well, I've just driven home. Two degrees C, and the heating system actually is working lovely. I'm nice and toasty and warm straight away as well. Of course, as soon as you turn it on, it's a great thing about electric cars, isn't it? You get instant heating. Whereas I've been driving the Turan, and it takes about two or three miles until you start getting a bit of warmth in the system. And this is spot on. The low mileage to start with, when I first turned it on at Gloucester, was down to the way it had been driven over since the end of December up to today. So I've reset the trip computer and of course the way I've been driving is more in line with the way you drive an electric vehicle. Um, and that's jumped right up now um, to a lot higher. So that was there for that reason. Um, that's why it's so low. But this has been on since I picked it up because it is giving a tire pressure warning. Um, doesn't tell me what the PSI is or what tire that's in. So I need to do a bit more investigation on that, see what that is. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd just explain them a big jump suddenly in that uh, trip computer's been reset. So what we've actually done is we're coming into Gloucester. So we're doing a trip out in the Zoe. Um, Amy's behind, parked behind the EMV 200. She was gonna park here in the lay-by and I'm gonna shoot on into Gloucester with her and Ruby. And then when we come back, she's gonna pick up her EMV and carry on back home. So about halfway point. And then I'm gonna go along miles out my way to go and pick the boys up who are at their nanas. <sighs> so we're using this, but it turns out that her car's not fully charged anyway, it's only on 33%, so she couldn't have made it into Gloucester, so it's a good job we're stopping here. Um, so, all good, she'll be able to get from there to home again, no problem at all. Anyway, I'm gonna have my first passengers in the car. How did you get in? Sorry? How did you get in? Oh, that's child seating. I am liking those rear lights. Look at that. Sweet looking lights. Ah, you got the seatbelt, can't find the clip. Right, let me have a look into this. Okay, the seatbelt was plugged in already. How you doing there? Exactly. Comfortable? Yes, yes, very nice. Oh. Clean. It's got clean. fleas, did you say? But it looks clean. It looks clean. Good. It's hard to clean for you, darling. <laughs> and we are off. Pickup of an EV. Straight at that junction. Could have done that in the uh, the old diesel tractor. Well, we've arrived in Gloucester. Guess where we are? The old free post. Okie dokie. Get the old charge cable out. Type two. What are you doing? Can't get in. Can't get in. She's the thing from there. That's a wipe her nose. That. Brilliant. Well done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. What's this car? It's an Audi. That's not. That's not an electric car. <laughs> oh, there we go. All plugged in. Sweet. How you doing, Rubes? Good. 
So it's at 73 stroke 74. Five hours 40 remaining. Ah, it's probably because two of us are on it, aren't they? But anyway, there we go. So I'll leave that in now and we'll see what that is when we get back. And that five hours 35 isn't for the both charging because I'm charging, but that car isn't charging. You log into the app, it says that B is available and B's flashing. And um, it says A is charging, which is us. So B isn't charging. Actually, it's a Kia. Right, all right, let's unlock this car. What are we at? Still going. 81%. There's something seriously wrong with that, I suddenly realised. I don't know why I've suddenly realised it. But it's 73%. It should take five and a half hours to charge. So that must be putting in next to nothing. Hmm. I wonder if it shows you on the app. <laughs> I wonder if it shows you on the app. She's doing that silly joke again with the door. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. Okay, well, charge history he says you have no activity yet, so that's probably not going to give me a readout, is it? It's not true. So, mm, a bit strange. What'd you say? Will cars drive themselves? Yeah, cars will drive themselves eventually, yes. We're not far off it. I expect when you come to do your driving test, electric cars will be the norm, and they'll probably all be driving themselves, bar a few. Brilliant. Right, okie dokie, off we go. Nice size. Compact for the UK car park. Stroke roads, stroke everything. Stroke everything. Oh. Just stroking everything. <laughs> Whee! We've been driving along, got Joel's in the back, Jacob's in the back, Toby's in the front. Yeah. It's the first time we've had them in the car. Um, yeah. And they've just commented that actually this car's very smooth. You think it's smooth, don't you, so? Yep. Which is interesting. They haven't been talking about it, but talking about something completely different. They just said this car's very smooth. So they've noticed that it's got a different ride quality than the Nissan Leafs. So I don't know if the Leafs got harder suspension than the Zoe or not. When I think about it, I suppose it is quite smooth. It's easy to take the little bumps. Just that little bit smoother. So, I thought it was worth mentioning that, considering they seem to have noticed it. Yeah. There's Good observation. He's, you said he's got more mileage as well, didn't you? It goes further off charge. Yeah. Oh, and there's no centre light up in the back there that we can see. No. Nice logo on the roof, but no light so you've only got these two front lights whereas in the leaf you've got a center light as well for the back seats right time to plug this one in well there we go 11 hours 35 minutes 54 percent charge on it at the moment leave that overnight okie dokie it is now about 10 to 9 at in the morning, where the dog, there he is, hasn't run off. Let's see what this one says about it then. Oh, 99%. And the light is out, so I presume it's fully charged. Oh, I've got to use the key though to unlock the cable. Boom. Key in my pocket. Okay, let's have a look at this. What we got on here then? Any percentage readout? Hmm. No. It says 146 miles on there, but no percentage readout. Let me just shut this again. Lock it. No. It does something weird, doesn't it? With the key. I've had this before. Whereas once you once you unlock it with the key fob, no, I'm not sure how to get that back round again. Perhaps a viewer can let me know how to do that. Let's open it up again. It makes a strange sound when you lock it. It does make a strange sound as the door is locking. Right, is it going to give me a battery percentage? Might do this time. Yeah, there we go. 100%. So 
we know it's 100% and let's see what we can do now on one charge. Said 145 miles in 46 miles and we'll see. So let's reset. Mm, it's come up with that error over the top of that. I don't want to do that. Open flap, tire pressure. No, right, I want to reset this travel thing. Yeah, let's, let's reset it. Okay, so that's all naught now. Totals. That's the miles travelled. That's all reset to zero on there. Oh, popped up to 180, look. It's because of the, I don't know really what that is. Back up to 100 anyway. We'll see what we do. doesn't matter about that uh, guessing thing there. We'll just see what we actually get. I suspect it will all be around about 150 miles, but we'll see. Okie dokie. Well, it's just disappeared again. But this nine here is telling me how much power I've currently used. Um, and you can see how far I've gone, 38.6, so 38 and a half miles, pretty much. Um, that is about 154 miles, I think it is. If my journey was the same as it has been up until this point, say that's 10 kilowatt hours, it's pretty much, it's just gone back down to nine for a split second, I pulled in it, regened, pushed that back down. Um, but basically, I can times that by four for a 40 kilowatt hour battery. It's 41, but more or less, and we're at figures at about 153 miles if the journey stays the same. Uh, I've got 123 miles remaining. So it puts this is thinking that actually I will do more than 153. But that's quite an interesting. It'll be interesting to see where that is when I get to the end um, of a real low battery. So how, how that correlates. That 9 kilowatts on that 38.6. Um, and that all three. But that's a useful readout. Didn't have that on the leaf. Um, that readout's quite nice. You obviously get a percentage on the leaf, which you don't get on this. No percentage anywhere. Um, so that figure could actually be pretty useful. But we'll just see where that ends up, all those figures, those three figures, and how accurate it all is. Well, this is actually a really nice car to drive. It's, it's just as spacious, it feels just as spacious as the leaf, but it isn't quite. It's a bit, it's a bit of a smaller car. But with the kids in the back last night, it was no different. You know, it's it's minimal in terms of, in real life, when you actually start using this, it's minimal. There are no light in the roof. It's a, it's a shame. I mean, you could be sorted with a, a cheap battery light you could stick on the roof if you want to. Um, sometimes the kids in the back, they read their book with that rear light on for homework that they need to get done on the way to something else that they need to do during the week. Um, it is pretty much, you're compensating for the leaf versus this, you're comp if you're interested, you're compensating for boot space, essentially. It's pretty much, in terms of the space segment, you're losing your boot space. So if you're carrying a huge amount of stuff about, I mean, the leaf has got a humongous boot, especially when you fold the seats down. Just amazing boot space. And this is a lot smaller. Still adequate for what I need it for. Um, no issues there at all, otherwise I wouldn't have bought, bought it, would I? I've already bought one of these, I've committed to buying one of these, I'm not going to pull out of buying it. And taking it on this seven day test drive, day two into that, I'm still convinced. <laughs> this is the right car. Um, the infotainment system, I, mean, I know our link isn't all it could be. Um, it's the same with most infotainment systems aside from Tesla, who seem to have it pretty much nailed. They all are a bit lacking, but this is a really nice system. There's a couple of things that I can't quite work out yet. I'm not sure there's an answer to them. One is that error message which is now gone. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm not even going to guess anymore. It's gone now. Oh, I discovered how to turn it off. Okay. I was going to say, just about to say, the I can't turn off the climate control. But I've just realised if you turn the fan speed knob all the way around to the left, it goes off. The reason you can't see it is the ergonomics of that are terrible. If you do that, I can see the off, the word off. If I sit here, driving along, so I'm dead centre now, can't see it. If I go here, can't see it, can't see it, can't see it, can see it. It says off. Right. Good position in there. Anyway, that switches off, so that's good. So I can turn that off, give it a little bit extra. And of course, with this car, I mean, the, I'm constantly being asked, constantly if you go through any of my youtube clips related to the zoe versus the leaf it, it, it's loads of comments if you go through them all you'll see that people say i bet you wish you waited for the new leaf the one that's just come out um oh there's a deer ahead wow 
you've always got to watch around Forest of Dean because usually one deer is followed by about 20 others and they cross the road. Nope, we're all good. Um, yeah, so, but I wish I waited. Now there's, I'm going to say it here because it might save me replying to these comments over and over and over again. I need to do a video probably just on that. The new leaf does not do the mileage that this does. It's nowhere near. So the newest one will do about 150 miles. And I imagine in winter, maybe a little bit less even, unless it's got some, something clever going on the battery. But it's 150 miles, just. Uh, I'm not talking squeezing every little bit out of it by hypermiling and going real slow everywhere. I just went using it normally, it's 150 miles. This car, I've already gone to London in it and done normal driving. So a maximum of 70 on the motorway, which may not be normal to some of you, but 70 miles an hour, mostly motorway, a bit of dual carriageway and a bit of the back roads. Uh, and I got 175 miles. That was in the, the tail end of summer. It was quite cold in the morning when we went up. Um, so there's that. It doesn't do the mileage at all. Now the 2019 Leaf probably will. You know, probably be a good 180 mile car. I don't know, be something like that. That's great, but that's not out. It doesn't exist. So that's fictional at the moment. Um, you can't buy it. The other thing is this Zoe, not this exact one, but another model, the equivalent pretty much. I bought for £16,000, all in, on the road. You cannot get another car that does 175 miles per charge for £16,000. So those two things are the key factors in why I've gone for a Zoe. If there was a Leaf that did this mileage, I would have probably gone for a Leaf, just because it's something I'm accustomed to. But there was another reason, is I wanted something different. I wanted to do another video blog on something completely different. I'm willing to take a punt on another model. But this fits in. If this had done 85 miles per charge, I wouldn't have bothered with it. There wasn't this 41 kilowatt hours there. I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have got a 22, for instance. Um, I would just stuck with another leaf. There was nothing else on the market. So it was that point wasn't really important. It just, you know, you do four years with a leaf. You don't really want to do another four years with a leaf. It's just interesting to get something different. Um, so I hope that explains that one. In terms of the space, I'm not sack. It's not like it's a two-seater. It's a four-door, five-seater car. I mean, if if it was missing, it didn't have three seats in the back. Then I wouldn't have got it. That would have been another killer. If I looked and gone, oh no, it's brilliant on every aspect. Tick tick tick. Apart from I can't fit five in here in total. So and I can. So that's all good. Um, it's not really lacking in any features that I would want um, or that the Leaf had. Yet, I haven't discovered them. I've got another five days with this Zoe. So I'll definitely let you know if there is, but so far, it's hardly sparse. I mean, you've got SD card slot, USB slot, you've got 12 volt out, you've got speed limiters, uh, um, cruise control, everything. Uh, you've got your phone, obviously got all the infotainment for the Bluetooth connection. You've got vents at the front, exactly in like the leaf. Um, yeah, at the moment, I'm, why wouldn't you get one of these? If, you, if you're someone that does higher mileage, get one of these, they're really cheap. <laughs> I mean, there is an argument to be said about the second-hand market, but I'm not going into that, this is if you want to buy a new car. And at the moment, there isn't a second-hand market on the 40 kilowatt leaf. But if you want to do, if we put them head-to-head, -head, the 40 kilowatt leaf and this, um, this, in terms of going somewhere that's 200 miles away or you're doing a 200 miles there and 200 miles back it would absolutely romp it you know you you wouldn't be stopping you'd stop a destination charge and come back and you can charge it a public charge point quicker because they charge faster than the leaf currently does um, on a public charger so this car should not be overlooked I mean a lot of people say people don't like the name Zoe but to be honest if, if you put off buying a car because of its name hmm, not really sure what to say about that I, I wouldn't be um, if it was bright pink maybe that wouldn't be for me um, but the name isn't going to bother me at all um, and some people put off by the fact it's Renault Renault and, Z and, and Nissan are the same company anyway and the build quality isn't, it isn't as solid as the Leaf, definitely not. But I've seen a guy, uh, if I even remember to do it, I'll put a link below, who soundproofed his doors. And boy oh boy, they sound like Leaf doors closing when you slam it when it's got the stuff inside. And it's something you can do yourself and you can buy the kit. 
to put in the door. So it is, you can actually, you can sort that out, you can reconcile that problem basically, which I might actually do. It's a very tinny van, van, van dory when you close them. But otherwise the interior of the build feels fine. It doesn't feel like it's lacking. Um, so yeah, the experience so far, and I don't think I've already had this, I've done 400 miles in it already, this exact demo model. Um, this car is, is brilliant so far. So we'll see how far we actually go. Um, by the way, I'm still. It still says on that dial now. I've done ten. I've used ten kilowatt hours. Um, I've done forty-two point six miles. Day three with the Zoe. Oh, what have we got then? Can't have many percentages left now. Thirty-seven oh, percent left. Oh, 57 miles it says. I've done 91.5 so far. Okay, well, we are low, and that's what we got left. 33 on there, and 120 pretty much traveled. So we're gonna be pushing it, because we're about 18 miles from home. So we'll see how low that gets. I'm now starting to get a little bit of range anxiety, but nothing major, and I'm only, I've, I've already done 120 miles. And it's just starting now, so. Uh, yeah, we should make it home, all being well, but we have got the Killer Hill. Okay, well, we've got up Killer Hill. 135.6 miles and 16 miles remaining. So I'm going to head back out now and let's uh, let's really uh, try and chew these miles up if we can. See uh, if I can push it. Not really that keen on pushing it, but let's uh, have some light because I've got that trusty steed of an adapter free pin plug just in case okie dokie well I've just got a ding, ding, ding noise and I've got the low battery warning right there and the dash just dimmed slightly and to tell me that 140.8 miles with 11 miles to go so my guesstimation before I started using this vehicle on this long loan with 150 winter miles looks like it might be spot on um, we will see, and that's gone amber down there rather than blue. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's going to be 150, but that's going to be taking it right to the uh, right to the edge. And 35 kilowatt hours, and obviously it's a 41 kilowatt hour battery. So um, yeah, we will try that. So in summer, I got um, 175 out of it. In the tail end of summer is when I last borrowed this car. So the winter obviously makes a big effect if, you, if you're not into your electric cars and you're looking at purchasing one, the winter will be less than summer. Um, about 21 degrees, something like that is the optimum um, for the operating temperature of a battery. So uh, it's still looking good. I mean, 150 miles is, is amazing. I mean, the new Leaf, the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf is 150 on a good day. And so this is gonna do 150 on a, on a more or less a worse day. The temperature currently look, is three degrees C. We've been operating from anything from one degree C up to 10 yesterday. I mean, I was sat at work, the car was just sat at work, but driving to work, it was 10. Um, this evening has mostly been around about that sort of figure. So yeah, this is, uh, it's gonna only get better during the year. So this is this is great little test. Um, yeah, and that you will see that is what it's like in real life. So I don't think I quite explained, this is the, this is the test over multiple days doing is more journeys than I would usually do but it's basically just general use so it's home back drop kids off here there work back etc etc what I'm gonna now gonna do this week I'm just gonna have time to do this test is I'm gonna do one long drive directly from A to B it's constant and see what mileage we get out of it there so there'll be two tests one is just a load of mixed driving not touching some main roads but no dual carriageways no motorways anything like that well actually one dual carriageway to be fair um, it's just basically been mixed driving. And then we're gonna have one where it's just solid driving. Uh, come out the little roads straight onto a motorway and it's gonna be constant motorway driving more or less. Um, so it's gonna be from Gloucestershire to Milton Keynes. Um, not sure exact, sure on a distance, 100 odd miles. And we'll just see what we get out of it then, see if there's any difference or you're still hitting 150 regardless. It could be less, could be more. Battery might be warmer, it might perform better as it warms up. Don't know, we're just gonna test it, that's why we're testing it. Um, yeah, and we'll see how that goes, and we'll see what the temperature is, etc. Also test the charging infrastructure in Milton Keynes, which is supposed to be really, really good. So we'll do that. Right, so it's 
doing all sorts of flashy things at me now. Dick, 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 dick. And it's gone red. Seven miles remaining, it says. Um, so, yeah. Use 36 kilowatt hours of the battery's capacity. Okay, just traveling past my house. Woo! Right, so we've got five miles left. Use 37 kilowatt hours of power. Traveled 147 miles. Temperature zero C. Woo! Pushing this only for you guys. Gotta go home now to my nice warm house. Nope, gotta see what this can do, haven't we? Ah! Right, anyway, so we're gonna get 150 out of it. It's 147, five miles remaining. Now, what I don't know, the only unknown is, for me, some of you guys will know the answer to this question already. Um, five miles, does it cut out when it's three miles left? Or does it let you run down to the, the end naught miles? I'm assuming it lets you run down. I am assuming that. It, I mean, 37 kilowatt hours, I'm not sure how much of the 41 is accessible, but, you know, we're not there yet we've got quite a way to go but according to the car I could do five more miles so I'll update you when I've done a couple more miles see what it says when it says I got three miles remaining or whatever or five I'll report back oh right okay we got to 148 make sure I don't drop in a big dippy 148.3 miles um, it went down to four miles on the old gesso meter um, and now it's gone dash, dash, dash. Brilliant. A bit like the leaf, it just leaves you in the lurch now. So 148.4 was four miles. Say it was on three, it dropped down to dash, dash, dash. It means I've got three miles left. Here we go. Turn around now, I'm heading back home. And just to prove it, there's the uh, naught, well, the dash, dash, dash. And there we are so far. I mean, according to that, we've got a bit more battery to go, but I wouldn't trust that now. Dash, dash, dash. Okay, well, I am back home. I'm not gonna go any further now. It's done 150.2. Now, if you were to believe this here, this 38 kilowatt hours, you would think that there's more to go still. I'm not gonna risk it in this loner, um, but we've got dashes all the way along, flashing lights, uh, you name it. But it's done 150 and I'm well happy with that. For winter, that is absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's gone back to one at my place, but it's been naught for quite a lot of this little extra excursion after I drop the kids off to go back out and try and push this thing. Um, so yeah, 150, really, really happy with that. Dash, 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 wouldn't even want to set off and go anywhere else now. Now I'm back safely home. Uh, maybe another couple of miles, I would guess. Um, but I think that uh, serves a good idea of, of what it's actually gonna do um, in the real world. So that's mixed driving. I could have actually um, gone on for a fourth day without charging to work if I hadn't popped back out. I could have got to work again and home again four days in a row without charging and I've done more miles. So when I actually get this Zoe, what it's gonna mean is I could probably get away with not charging for a whole week. So even if we had a power cut, I could survive a week and more if I cut my journeys down. But to and from work, this would last flipping ages. Brilliant, love it, absolutely love it. Oh, and there's my report, if you would like to see it for that um, that journey when it was reset. So distance 150.2, 90 out of 100, energy save, total consumption. Um, that's all good. Let's save that. I'm getting a sign up on here. It says I've turned eco off, which minimizes all the heating and everything. Um, slows the throttle response down like you're driving through mud. But in this instance, I put eco on, I wanted the heat cut down. I wanted the heating on, but I wanted it cut down. Um, and that, that actually works really well. Sticking eco on makes the heating basically rubbish. Um, but at naught degrees and on eco, it's enough just to keep the cabin temperature nice. Just about bearable, rather than keep switching it on, off, on, off. Um, so anyway, if you can get an extended test drive on one of these, do it. If, you, if you're still unsure at this point, as we go into this, and obviously we've got another trip to do and we've got a few more days until Friday. Um, we are Monday at the moment. Probably won't be a lot in between. We've got that long trip, which will be the next thing. Um, 
yeah, so that'll be the next thing really on this video. But if you can do it for a long period of time, it takes a day or two to get used to the car. Then it's a bit like when you move into a brand new house, the noises it makes. This hasn't got any rattles, which is pretty surprising considering I would assumed it was like a, a step down from the quality of the leaf. Now in terms of the, the feel of it, it is plasticky, but there aren't any rattles. And obviously you would pick them up straight away in this being an electric car. Um, the positioning of the light switches on the right hand side, spot on, mirror controls, electric mirrors, um, all this is really, really good. So you've got auto down driver's side and auto up, which is pretty nice, but I, I am I'm genuinely surprised that there aren't rattles in this car. And that is a thumbs up, it's absolutely brilliant. Driving along in pure silence. The uh, climate control works really, really well once you lean like this and go, oh, there's the off button. Um, putting the fans down to turn it off also works well, so it's constantly adjusting and it, it heats the cabinet really nicely. Um, keeping the mist clear, fine, clears that. Being a slightly compacter car, controlling all of that is a bit easier. It's got less work to do than if it was a bigger car. And it's been, I mean, I've had all the kids in here, I've had a lot of stuff in here, we've been piling a wheel in here, we've had two kids in the back, um, and Amy in the front. We've had Mike come with us, with Ruby in the back, and Amy in the back, sat in the middle seat, because a lot of stuff piled on the other seat. Um, so it's done really, really well. So far, so good, well impressed with it. Right, let's get it on charge, because I do actually need to travel to work tomorrow, and on this, these are lifesavers, by the way. Link below to where you can get one. Um, but three pin, obviously crazy slow. This will be something like 22 hours to charge from empty to 100%. But you guarantee one thing, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I will have 40% battery, 50% battery, something like that. Um, good to go for another, whatever that is, 80 miles, 90 miles, something like that. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you would, so if you haven't got an electric car and you're thinking of getting one, you're watching this video, you will know this already if you've got an EV, but you would get a wall charger for your home, and so you wouldn't charge off this. You see a lot in the media and the papers that they always quote this sort of charge time. It takes 22 hours to charge a Zoe. Yes, it does when you run with one of these. Day to day, and if you, you own this car or you were leasing it for a long period of time, you'd stick a wall charger on your wall and it would charge massively quicker. Um, pumping out usually typically 70, seven kilowatt power into the car as opposed to under three possibly 2.2 .2 or something on this um so yeah massively faster four times faster than that and then if you're out and about and you're on a rapid charger on the motorway services or something like that it'd be even quicker to charge this car the quick charge version is about an hour and 15 i think an hour and 20 or something to charge 200 percent so right okay let's get her on charge At night time, that light isn't really enough to be able to see what you're doing. You see? So much so that I've forgotten there's a flat there. There we go. Time remaining, 24 hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> there you go. 24 hours and 20 minutes from 0% on the three pin. But, you know, it is what it is. And you could survive from charging this from your house as long as you've got a driveway where you can actually put the cable out. Love it. Okay, it's about 7.40 in the morning, something like that. Still charging, which is good news. Good news for us, good news for you. What's this going to give us if I open the door? Look at that. See, 41%. The guesstimation wasn't far out, was it? Look at that temperature at minus two. Woo! About 20 past eight. What have we got on the old dash? something 44 percent and i can do 70 miles okay this is day five i think let's have a look oh 92 percent two hours 20 remaining so that was been on charge since 6 30 last night <laughs> it's now what's the time 7 28 a.m so yep almost fully charged Oh, good morning. One thing I like about this Zoe is that when you turn it on, it basically is instantly available with it, we don't know, a few, a second. 
So I'm going to press the power button now. Handbrake off into reverse. I can drive the car. That is not the case with the leaf. You turn it on, put it in D, you can't put it into D straight away. Put it in D, put it in D, put it in D, put it in D. Then eventually it goes into D and then it's like, come on, come on, come on, and then you're off. So it's a small little thing. But in the morning, not with that dog in the back of the car, single track road, there's a car coming down from the top of the hill. You're like, right, quick, let's get in, let's go, before that really slow lorry tractor comes. And you're like, come on, come on. Whereas with this, what I've noticed, I jump in like, oh, let's go, and it's gone. So that's an interesting one. I've also found with the leaf, if you're parked on a hill, you put it into D, it is actually in D, it says D on there. You let go of the brake to go forward, it rolls backwards. You're like, no, 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 and you press the accelerator, nothing happens, you slam the brake on. I find that, and you learn, obviously, just put your foot on the brake and just wait until, even though it says you can drive, just wait a couple of extra seconds and then you can go. And that's only, it only happens on a hill. But I do like the way it's immediately available. You turn it on, boom, gone. That's sweet. Which is weird, because the infotainment system on this is much more laggy than the Leaf. So the Leaf's one's real responsive. <laughs> you know? So they've obviously not put much much power into that thing, or some, or it's loading more stuff than the Leaf. If they're the same power, this is this is slower. All I know is this, this is slower to respond than the um, the Leaf infotainment system. So the other thing is, and I'm yet to find out. I don't want to delve into it too much in this seven bay test drive because I still want stuff to find out about when I get mine. It's always nice, isn't it, to get into something when you first get it. So I don't want to discover everything on this, but. <clears throat> It's not an OLED dis display, basically. So at night time, the black isn't really black because it displays the time. So you get this white wash, essentially, across the whole screen, which makes it quite bright. Whereas in the leaf, you can press and hold the button, the brightness button. And if you press and hold it, it says shutting down screen. And so it actually turns the, sh the screen off, if, unless, of course, you've got the clock displayed on that screen. I'm not sure it still boots down, and I can't, I can't test it again now. Um, but I think if you have a clock display, you've got a setting, basically. You can say, I want the clock display on this screen, or you can turn it off. And if it's on, I think it remains on. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think that's the case. Uh, but on this, I can't find a way, and I haven't really looked that hard, to be fair, to turn off the temperature display and the clock. So I'm not sure if I've customised or not. Let me know in the comments below if you've got a Zoe and you're actually able to turn this screen completely off, so it's just black, it's off. Again, I'm nitpicking, but yeah, there we go. Uh, I just thought I'd mention those couple of things, because that's what I thought. We had a beautiful moon yesterday. What date are we on today? It is, what is the date? I don't know. My smartwatch doesn't tell me, and nor does the car. Is it the 31st yesterday? Who knows? Anyway, onwards and upwards. This is, by the way, this is performing really well. Love it, absolutely love it. And I had, so I didn't charge last night. Um, still got 46 miles left to go. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the amount of times I'm going to be charging, unless I just want to keep charging 100% all the time, the amount of times I'm actually going to be charging is probably once every three days, as opposed to every evening. Um, yeah. Oh, the other thing is, this has got drum brakes on the back. I don't know what this means in terms of anything that's relevant, but it's got drum brakes on the back, unlike the Leaf, which has got discs on the back. Um, so... Actually, do you know something? I found the Leafs brakes, and I've mentioned this multiple times, and multiple people have mentioned it. I th we, well, we assume it's because they're not used much, the brakes, and they can become quite grabby at slow speeds. You come trying to roll and do a nice, it's like, uh, 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 and even if you're just lightly pressing the brake pedal, um, they grab. Don't seem to get this on this. Um, whether that's because of the drum brakes on the back, I have no idea. Something's different where it's not grabby or because it's so new. Who knows? Find out. Obviously, when I got my Zoe, I will report back if they get real grabby brakes. I shall obviously be saying. Um, yeah. Right. Mm, uh, mm. Yeah. Electric mirrors. Folding mirrors. And heated mirrors. So they burn off the ice, I find out. That's pretty neat. The Leaf didn't have that. Had electric mirrors and electric folding in mirrors. But they weren't... Um, they didn't have the... Uh, 
defrost on them. So that's pretty neat. I like that. It's actually a lot of lot of bonus points. I haven't really come across any negatives at the moment. Now. There is no way of telling if that's now charging. So we turn it on from upstairs. So now I'm gonna have to go all the way down and have a look, see whether it's actually charging. Ooh, my legs. Uh, I would have said, no, it's not charging. Whether that's timed out or not, I don't know. Uh, let's press the charge port button. Oh, what's that mean? Does that mean it's now charging? I cannot tell. Okay, let's try again. Uh, not sure. It's not cleared. I think it stops flashing like that and starts pulsating more. Ah, there we go. Right. That now is charging. Definitely, I can hear the little high pitched noise as well. Okay, it's early in the morning, about 7 o'clock. And it's still charging. And the fan is going, you can hear it. Can you hear this? That's the fan noise. Oh, 100%. Well, that's good news. Because uh, Milton Keynes trip today, which is 99 miles to my destination. And so obviously I can't make it there and back. Um, I will be doing this trip without any charge planning. Um, so I'm going to get to Milton Keynes and then I'm going to look at what charges are around. Um, I've got no cards on me. Um, I've obviously got my mobile phone so I can install an app if it's needed. Um, but we'll just see how that one goes. Uh, I'm going to treat this like a normal car pretty much. I've just come across an absolute genius idea in this car. I haven't come across it before in the last test I did at all. If you put it on eco, which makes everything like you're going through mud, which I think I mentioned already in this video, it only does 59 miles an hour, which is absolutely spot on. So if you're on the motorway sometimes, if you're trying to eke out as much as you possibly can, you would put a speed limiter on to say, I don't want to go over this speed. And it keeps you in check. You can just keep your foot basically on the throttle and just sit back and enjoy the ride. You have to keep making sure you're watching the speed. Go, oh, no, you're using too much power. Put, stick it on eco, it does that for you. It's an absolutely brilliant idea. Um, and if, for those of you thinking, what if you want to pin it, go past something for a split second, um, it's got the kick down function on the throttle. So you can go past that point and all the light flashes eco saying, you go, you're not eco anymore. Um, that's a great little feature if you just want to sit on a dual carriageway, a long main road, and you want to be economic because you're trying to do a big gap between charges. Just press the eco button. It's 50, 59 miles an hour. Keep that throttle, and you can move your foot up and down in eco, and it makes no difference really to the throttle. Um, whereas well, if you take eco off, it's really sharp. That is a brilliant little feature. I like that. Okay, well, I'm at the point now where in my leaf, I would have to be putting it on charge uh, I've done about 70 miles and I've got 80 miles left on the gasometer. I've used 19 kilowatt, 19 kilowatt hours in this car because obviously it's lighter so it goes further for the amount of power you use. So I just thought I'd report in with that um, and I am, I'm not sure how far away I am. I'm trying to think now, I've done 70, 80, 90, so I'm about, about 30 miles away approximately so I'd have had to charge and leave now well of course I'm just going to go straight there and I'll have enough to come halfway back again in this uh, this Zoe so that's that's pretty good okay I have arrived 97 miles and I've used 27 kilowatt hours so the GOM says 48 but let's stick with the math we got here 27 kilowatt hour and 97 miles so you work it out <laughs> um, Basically, I could do what, 100 and, I could do another 140 miles. So 10 miles worse off coming on the motorway. Um, that is pretty amazing. So yeah, there we go. I have arrived anyway, six degrees. So I've arrived at John's house and uh, just plugged it in to charge it up, which is all good, but I've got the front door open. So I've come up with a genius solution. I've used all his coats and I've crammed them all the way up here, apart from that little gap there, so it stops the cold air coming in. 
It's about 250 pounds of <laughs> <laughs> damage. What's happened is um, I, I pulled that off the wall though. So yeah, there we are. Welcome home. <laughs> Right, I've come away to charge it up on a rapid, so we're going to give it a go. Um, I haven't got, I say, I've done no planning for this at all. So what we're going to try and do is open that up. Now, apparently it's a polar charger, so I need... You don't have those around where you are? No, we don't, no, but I've seen someone trying to steal it on YouTube. So we're just going to stand in front of it, see what happens. Pretty clever though, isn't it? I feel like your food cold. Do they, do they not deliver food fast? Could you get that delivered to your house? Would it, were they delivered to it or was it only selected areas? I think it's just the mapped out certain parts around Mount Kings with it. I rode my unicycle past it on the day of my crash. What crash? <laughs> um, and it was like living in the city of the future. Was it? Right, let's try and... So it does say polar on there, so I think what I need is this one here, see, slot that in there. What's that gonna do, I wonder, if anything? Because it, presumably at some point, it's gonna want me to actually pay for this. Tap your card in the reader. Yeah, I haven't got a card. So, to use the charge point, register for Paul membership app there. Or download Paul an app, so you can have the app, you see. Yeah, I haven't got a card. So, I think what I'm going to have to do, like call customer services, what I'll do is I'll have a look at the app. Because this is not giving me any details at all. So, I'll go and sit in the car now. There's the, the experience over there. Electric cars. Yeah, I'm not going there. They were trying to find a network drive to transfer some photos. But it looks, uh, looks nice. Brand new Nissan Leaf. Amazing looking car, uh, except for that's not a leaf, it's a micro. But they look exactly the same in my eyes. Okay, so done the charge. Ended it remotely because I couldn't quite get back within 30 minutes. But with Charge Master, it's six quid. For 30 minutes charge, it's ridiculously expensive. Um, yeah, not only that, you have to top up with 20 quid. So, probably won't be using that ever again. Oh, a little bit of warmth coming out there from somewhere. Good, like that. Let's go, see how much charge percentage we've got. Okay, what's the percent? Oh, what did that six quid get me? Oh, I did you do 83 miles? What's that? It's According to that. 40 miles? Something like that. It doesn't really miles. determine the percentage, does it? Phone ringing. Now that charge gave me 80 miles of range. Um, so that's not quite enough because as you know, I need to have about 99, so 100 miles of range. So I'm gonna plug it in now to John's house. Hopefully that'll start charging. See if it's doing its calculations, which it seems to do. Just ongoing checks. So 54, if I can zoom in, maybe you're gonna hear it charging. 54%. So theoretically, isn't that enough to get me back? No, it isn't, because I got here on 30%. So really, I think I need 60% minimum, I think. Ah, we'll work it out. But I think it's 60% minimum I need to get back. Right, so we finished a load of transferring files and stuff that we needed to do about 10 minutes ago. Let's see what it's on. Luckily, we had a load of work to do. 69%. Excellent, so that should be plenty. Okay, well, 106 miles it shows on my uh, screen. 106 miles it shows. And we've got 97-ish to actually go. So hopefully we'll be all right. Yeah, I haven't really got much worries, to be honest. I think it'll be fine. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, I am 60 miles into this journey and I've got 38 miles left. And on the gong is 38 miles. <laughs> so basically, it will be completely empty if both
both are exactly right. It'll be completely empty by the time I get home. Yep. So, I'm just going to have to wing it, because presumably as I start going up Killer Hill, there'll be no readout. I'm just going to hope that I make it up the hill. It's going to be that tight. It's literally the same. 38 miles left on the GOM, 38 miles on the sat-nav. Woo, let's see how we get on. Okay, set so rep. 21 on the GOM, and 17 miles to home. So I might as well come down a big hill, so I've managed to get there. Um, this is going to be, this is going to be incredibly tight. Not particularly that worried, um, but I don't want to run out. <laughs> this is the thing, I'm going to take this car back tomorrow, so I just want to make sure I could charge um, at a slow post to put 10 minutes on it or something, so I'm going to think about that in the next couple of minutes, whether I pull in there um, and try and take advantage of that, or just really push it and see what we end up at. I'm quite tempted to push it and see what we end up at. So I might try that. Okay, right, I want you to stick with me. We're now going up Killer Hill. Um, yeah, so now 10. So stick with me. I'm going to read out this is what Killer Hill's like. So I'm not pushing it. I'm doing 44 and a 50. And this is this is what it's like. So this is going to be a little bit boring part for you. Um, but you'll just get to see what happens to the battery in an electric car when you start going up a real steep hill. So I'll just read out to you. We're we're, we're actually we just start at the very foot of it. It's a gentle slope to start with. Uh, oh, by the way, I've gone amber, so I've got an amber warning light on, nine miles. Amber warning light on, and the display's gone from blue to amber, and it's basically you can't really see any battery left at all now in the battery display. So this is going to be just a, a live run through, as it were, of how much that gone changes in such a short space of time. So you can start at the foot of the hill with 11. We've done three quarters of a mile, it's on nine. I mean, this is amazing really, I've traveled just short of 100 miles and I'm gonna get back home pretty much to the dot on the battery. <laughs> so, I have to get back on charge, gotta go back to Gloucester tomorrow. So now we've just gone up and now we're dipping back down a second and then the hill really starts to kick in now. And the trouble with this hill is, right towards the end of it, when you know you're really pushing it, it gets really, really steep. It's eight miles. And so as you can tell, I'm doing about 40 miles an hour and I'm stuck behind cars. My journey back actually has been a lot slower, but not because I've been trying to watch the battery. Um, it's because In one mile, really at the roundabout, slow. take the second exit onto A4151. A4151. Okay, so this car will start doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things to warn me in a minute that I've basically got no battery left. Um, I'm still on eight miles. I'm surprised actually I'm still on eight. Mainly because I'm traveling 39 miles an hour and a 60 due to a very slow car, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy because I'm an electric car trying to get home on a very, very low battery. So one of the things today to note, and I'll read out the mileage in a minute, um, was that Again, taking someone else out who's not used to electric cars is so much of a faff to them. The, the whole concept of electric car is strange in the first place, seven miles. And it's made even worse when you pull up to a charger and you have to have a look around that charger to see who the manufacturer is or the supplier of the charger or the supplier who's gonna, you're gonna network, you're gonna connect to. And they're like, why are you doing that? You go, well, you have to know because there's actually multiple suppliers, many suppliers and you have to know which one to know which app to download to be able to pay them. They're like, oh right, wow, you need an app. Oh, you know, my dad wouldn't be any good at this kind of thing. He couldn't have this car because he doesn't use his phone. Six miles, couldn't use his phone. Oh, six miles, red, flashing at me. Um, so there's that, it's immediate stumbling block with the charging. And then when you sign up for it, Polar Network, um, I signed up to, um, it was 20 pounds to sign up. And don't want to spend 20 quid, never use rapid chargers. But anyway, at the roundabout, quid, take the second exit onto A4151. A lot of noise. Um, so 20 quid, 
and then it's six pound for 30 minutes. And you say, well, hang a minute, how, how much will that get you? That's the questions I asked. Well, it will get me X amount of percentage. In oh, three right, quarters so of a start. mile, continue on to St. White's Road. An hour and a half. All right, six. Well, hang on a minute, the mass isn't making sense here. You can just drive a diesel. And that's the sort of situation you should get yourself into. And then you have to explain that there's multiple suppliers for the chargers that are available. There's different types of chargers, different cables for different cars, different type ways chargers work. Some take a card swipe payment, very few. Some take a card, some take an app and a card. And it goes on and on. Um, and it just blows people's minds that it's so complex. And then you've got posts, different, you know, you've got a, a public post that you charge into that doesn't take an app, takes a swipe card only. And then you need a special cable for that. The cables aren't attached to it, the cable's in the boot. Or if you haven't got one, you need to go and buy one. And then you've got three for five miles. Then you've got three pin plugs. And it's horrible showing people these. This car's brilliant because this is limited to having to charge a lot. Um, you know, it's 100, it does 175 miles in summer. You're basically not going to have to explain to anyone how to charge four miles but just to take it out to someone if they had this for a day 24 hours they might be really really put off because one of the first things you do when you continue on to St White's Road is do things that are abnormal because you want to see the excitement of it you want to go and charge up and that's where all the confusion cuts in at that point which is a massive shame so their experience of it is in 250 yards where do I at find the roundabout these chargers? they seem to be absolutely everywhere dash dash Road. dash so it's about three miles now on it um at the roundabout, take the second exit over completely, to which is road. absolutely ridiculous. The whole thing is is messed up. It's not simple. So I'm really glad that it's supposed to be that all of them are going to take card payments, and only then have you got the complication of the different types of. Charges. In half a mile, turn and left onto Rusbridge Road. Are. I'll tell you what, sat that's annoying it, and where those charges are. So they've got to fight those two things. Uh, but once these cars can do 600 miles per charge, it's less and less of a problem. Um, but that means six quid for 30 minutes, and then as soon as it goes into the next segment of 30 minutes, it's another six quid. That's absolutely ridiculous. So I had to follow it around and go, right, it's 20, 29 minutes and 30 seconds, 29, 35. I ended it 40 seconds early because I didn't want to get charged another six quid. And I don't even know when I use that again anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, so you saw, you heard there my counting down, and that was over such a short period of time. So it was about over two and a half miles, something like that. Lost the entirety of that 12 miles. Completely crazy. Um, but anyway, pretty sure I'm going to make it home. Okay, well there we are. Nothing on the clock. And it was 96.6 miles and I used 24, 25 kilowatt hour of, of my battery and I think I left on 68%, did I? 66%. So that is a pretty close run. So that's rolling straight from Milton Keynes straight in um so i haven't stopped in 70 yards uh, the destination you is what, on your right i forgot what i was saying now so that was really close and some of the things that have helped are having the speed limiter on set at 51 on a 50 mile an hour limit and having it on eco which most people absolutely hate but for this type of driving to get back on this charge it's massively more relaxing to know that you're not pushing the car every time you touch the throttle you're wasting energy um, so it's a lot softer throttle and secondly the speed limiter I can't go over that speed limit so that's pretty good that's a simple button press to, to set that so that's really good that actually means that I didn't stop at all on the way up or on the way back and if I was in the leaf the shortest time I could have possibly stopped on the way up was 30 minutes and on the way back was 30 minutes so in this with a much bigger battery which is what, what the answer is to that um, saved an hour essentially from my what I've usually done over the last four years just on that short journey essentially is 200 miler so yeah um, the experience of the rapid charging was just a rip off and it's six quid for 30 minutes uh, but then it was free parking so the parking there I would think was four pound for two hours but so the parking didn't cost anything uh, but I only could only park there for 30 minutes because it was six pound for every 30 minutes so that's quite good but I'd have paid four quid nonetheless um, so we had that and we went into the shops to get a drive, so we were doing a task at the time, and then charging at John's house, um, just on the real slow plug, gave me just enough. Um, and when I left, we weren't waiting for this car to charge, I left because we finished doing the work we were doing. Um, it just so happens that it finished on exactly the right amount. This is going back tomorrow, but 
the great thing is I've got one coming in March, so I'm well pleased with that. Really, really good car, and it's really quiet on the roads as well. So if you turn everything off and just listen to it, you're on the motorway. It's really, really quiet. You don't hear buffeting around the mirrors or anything like that. Everything that holds together, it hasn't rattled. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, I really like the speed limiter toggle switch, which is down here on the left-hand side, and you can put cruise control on, which I didn't use at all. Uh, you just punch that, switches it on. The dash changes color, which is really nice, the way it changes between the two. Um, and you just say you want it set at that speed, job done. Easy as that. But I'm gonna explore some more of these features when I actually get mine. As I say, I don't wanna delve in it too much because I want something to explore and discover um, once I get mine. Okie dokie, it's going back to Gloucester tomorrow. I'm gonna to try and give it a quick wash if I've got time tomorrow. So it's, it gets mud over the last seven days. Do it all over it, so I'm gonna clean it up hopefully. All right, let's get it back on charge. All on charge. Let's see what it says. 3%. That's the answer to that question. So I got back on 3%. Hmm, okay. Yeah, might have been able to do four or five more miles then.